Good morning, House of Prayer. We thank you for joining us today. We hope that this message from our special guest preacher today really blesses your heart and you hear from the Lord. We serve an awesome God. Powerful God. Unstoppable God. It's an honor to be here this morning with you and just to feel God's presence so strong in this house. I told my daughter, who I'm so glad her and my son-in-law, Zach, are here, Angela and Zach, when we were worshiping, I said, you look across this, this is what Gramercy Church is going to look like someday. I believe that. I'm so thankful for this church. It's awesome to come here and worship and just feel such a deep flow. This don't happen overnight, and it don't happen without war and passion and people. And I'm so thankful, so thankful for you. So glad that Josh preaches out sometimes. He's in uh, Plottenville this morning with Brother Joseph, which opens the door for me to come and to preach at House of Prayer. <laughs> it's always so good to be here with you and just to worship with you. I'm so thankful. Next week is Father's Day. Hey, man, our world needs some dads. Man, it does. Fathers, men, strong men. So be a father. Jesus said, pure religion and undefiled is to care for the widows and the fatherless. So if we live in a world with a lot of fatherless people. Our job is to find them and to influence them for God. Amen. I hope I stir something up in you today. Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift of God. I want to stir up the gift of God that's in you this morning. I want you to say amen to. That means it is so. That means I agree. Whenever you preach, you want people to be in agreement. It's powerful to hear the word. Can somebody say amen? amen. It's powerful to believe what you heard. And it's also incredibly powerful to speak, to confess yes amen i agree to come into agreement with the word so you're going to preach with me today amen. hallelujah 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 joel chapter 3 verse 9 joel chapter 3 verse 9 we used to say i'll wait till the pages stop flipping but the pages are long gone now it's the phones including mine it says, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your prune hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. It doesn't say, let the strong say, I am strong. It says, let the weak say, I am strong. Because before you become it, you're going to have to say it. Amen. I want to preach to you for a few minutes on the subject. Wake up the mighty men. I've been preaching this at our church. This will be week five. I changed it. I made a series out of it called The Path of the Mighty. But I've been preaching this message in one form or another, over and over. And I pray that eventually we'll wake up the mighty men. Amen. Lord Jesus, anoint this vessel this morning, God. Help me to step out of the way and allow the Spirit to just flow through me today. I pray, God, that you would open our ears today. Let every distraction be gone. God, help us to focus on the kingdom of God this morning and the word of God. Speak to your people today in a mighty way. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated for a little while. Wake up 
the mighty men. There is an assault on manhood in our world today. There is a satanic attack on God's order in our world today. There is an attack on truth in our world today. I've found that what Satan fears most, he fights hardest. If you want to know what will bring down the enemy's kingdom, look at what he attacks the most ferociously. If you want to know what the enemy fears, look at where his efforts are put. We live in a world that celebrates feminine men and crucifies warriors. There is more to this than just sexual preference or gender confusion. There is a spiritual component that is trying to erase all the landmarks. There is a spiritual assault on truth in our world today. There is a spiritual undercurrent that says if I feel like one plus one equals seven, then to me it's seven. There is a demonic voice that says, if I feel it's right, it's right. It wants us to trust feelings and not facts. Into this war, into this confusion, I want to preach this morning to House of Prayer in Thibodeau. This is where mighty men come in. It's time the Lord spoke to me to wake up the mighty men. This attack is not just on men, it's on might. Evil thrives in weakness. If you want to see a people that is oppressed, if you want to see a people that are slaves, if you want to see a people that are controlled, show me a people where they've given up where they've laid down, where they've decided there's nothing they can do, where they've decided that it's out of control and there's no way to change it, when the mighty men have gone to sleep or have just simply said there's nothing else we can do, then the enemy will run rampant in that kind of a place. But that is not where we live today. I don't believe it's time to give up on Thibodeau. I don't think it's time to give up on Louisiana and I don't think it's time to give up on America or the world. It's time to wake up the mighty men. What what makes mighty men mighty? That's a good question. And the answer is one word, battle. Mighty men are defined by resistance. Mighty men are defined by battle. We don't even know if a man or a woman is mighty until there's a storm, until there's a war, until there's an opportunity to lay, to lay down, to run away, to flee, to fear. That's when we find out if it's a mighty man or not. It's time to wake up the mighty men. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says this, therefore my beloved brethren, man I love the word of God. You know it don't change with the times. They don't go in there and rewrite the language. (laughs) When everything gets twisted out in the world, the word of God is fixed. Hallelujah. The word of God is fixed forever settled in heaven. (laughs) He said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. My God, that's a word the world don't like today. But that's still in the book. It says, be steadfast. Un, come on somebody. Unmovable. My God, that is what a mighty man looks like. He is steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Paul says in Acts 20 verse 22, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. This is such an interesting little passage. I don't know of another place in the scripture where this kind of thing. Paul was warned not to go to Jerusalem. He was warned that if you go back to Jerusalem, you are surely going to be in prison. You are surely going to be killed. You have a, you were one of their, their, their pet boys. <laughs> you were going out and you were persecuting the church. You were dragging Christians and the Jewish people were so proud of you, Paul. You were doing such a good job. You were destroying the church, but something got a hold of your life and you went from being a destroyer to a builder. You turned from a blasphemer to a mighty man. And so they said, don't ever go back there, Paul, because if you go back to Jerusalem, they're going to kill you there. But Paul said, I go bound. Somebody say bound in the spirit. There was something that had a hold of Paul. And he said, I know that there's trouble for me in Jerusalem. But the spirit is telling me I've got to go back to Jerusalem. And then it says, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Paul was not ignorant. He was not stupid. He knew what was going to happen as soon as he walked back into that city. But he said, save the Holy Ghost. Witness it in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide with me. Watch verse 24, though. He said, but none, hallelujah, none of these things move me. I'm talking about this message today. Wake up, the mighty men. None of these things move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course. My God, there's something in my spirit that says I got to finish what God has started in me. And he said, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. There was something in Paul that said, I know there may be trouble, but I'm bound by the spirit and I got to do what God has called me to do regardless of what happens let the chips fall where they may I must do what God is calling me to do I want to tell you something mighty men are stubborn sometimes mighty men will not be convinced that evil is good and good is evil mighty men stand up sometimes and say no you got to know what to say no to and what to say yes to. There were a lot of people telling Paul, you need to say no to Jerusalem. The problem with Paul was the spirit was saying yes. And he said, I'm gonna say yes to God, irregardless of who is telling me to say no. Mighty men fight to the death. Mighty men are unmovable. My God, mighty men don't cry when conditions get bad because bad conditions are what make mighty men mighty. Mighty men get stronger when trouble comes. Mighty men do not bend and they never bow to wickedness. There is something the devil hates about people who refuse to give up no matter what. Hallelujah. There's something the enemy, it just turns his stomach when somebody stands against the wiles of the devil. Of course, when you start to take over your city and your community and your school young person and your, and your town uh, a church planter, when you start to move in the spirit and you begin to break the captives out of hell, you are going to face resistance. Of course, the enemy is going to fight you. Of course, you're going to be resisted. But resistance is our finest hour. There's something about mighty men that say, I'm not afraid of the devil. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be mighty for God. There's nothing wrong with that. There's something wrong with wanting to be mighty in other ways. But when you want to be mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, when you have passion for God's kingdom and for the people of God, that brings power. That is faith. I'm not afraid of the devil. I understand that God put the devil in the earth. He did that. He didn't put him here to destroy me. He put him here to define me. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm afraid of sleep. Oh God, my 
My greatest enemy is sleep. My greatest enemy is laziness. My greatest enemy is apathy. My greatest enemy is to preach some lame motivational speech. My greatest enemy is to waste the precious time God has given me to accomplish his purpose in the earth. I came here this morning bound in the spirit to wake up somebody that is asleep. It's time for the mighty men and women of God to wake up. This world has gone in a terrible direction and it is moving fast. The darkness is coming fast, but the darkness does not have to win. I have not given up on my town. I have not given up on Thibodeau. I have not given up on Louisiana, and I have not given up on America. It's not time to give up. It's time to rise up. It's time for the mighty men and women of God to wake up. The devil don't want us to inspire people to be mighty. The devil doesn't want us to preach faith. The devil doesn't want us to make war on his kingdom. The devil wants us to sleep. But God sent me this morning to tell you it's time to wake up the mighty men. Colonel George Taylor June 6, 1944, landed on the beach in Normandy, where the world would one day call D-Day. He jumped off of an amphibious vehicle with his men, and he went into chest deep water. He said, we raised our rifles over our head, and we tried as fast as we could to get ashore under heavy machine gun fire. He said, I've never been, I've never felt so vulnerable in my life. I'll never forget one time my cousin Don and I were fishing off the coast of Holly Beach. <laughs> Some nasty water down there. And we were chest deep. You ever been up there fishing and you're jumping up with the waves and just kind of settled down? We we're flinging our reels out there, having the time of our life. I don't remember if it was somebody in the water or on the shore that said shark. But they were right. It sure enough was. He was right there with us. We saw him. He surfaced a couple of times. One of them came past Donovan, came right to where I was in turn and went away from me. And it felt like a boat motor had turned on when he flipped his flipper. Well, let me tell you something. I wanted to walk on water. <laughs> I really did. I was like, my God. But you know what you could do? You're like. <laughs> You're like chest deep. It's like nothing you can do. I can imagine these poor men. just a barrage of bombs and bullets flying at them and they're out in the water rifles over their head loaded down with packs chest deep they got to the shore and they hid they found the only shelter they could find which was a little hill right on the coast a pile of concrete blocks they curled up behind those blocks as best they could and they shook themselves off. And Colonel George Taylor said the title of this book. He said, fellas, there's only two kinds of people on this beach. There's those who are dead and those who are about to die. He said, there's two kinds of people on this beach. There's those who are already dead and those who are about to die. He said, the chances of us surviving this are very slim. He said, if we got to die though, let's don't drown like rats curled up in the fetal position, hiding. Let's die up there. And he pointed up to the machine guns that were being fired down at the troops. Let's don't drown like rats, church. Let me tell you something. I want to remind you of something. This world is not our home. This is a temporary assignment. There are two things that are sure in this world. Death 
and taxes. <laughs> the question is not, are we going to die? The question is, where are we going to die? And how are we going to die? And what are we going to be doing when we die? And are we going to accomplish anything before we die? He's, and so these men took hold of what Colonel Taylor said and they pulled themselves together and they launched out from behind that little hill and they ran towards the enemy fire and they made it to another little hiding place right underneath the machine guns and there were fewer of them when they made it there because many of them were killed in the run but they they did the same thing in the book they just collapsed down under the rocks and they put their hands over their head and they came to themselves for a minute and Colonel Taylor yelled out again men there's two kinds of people on this beach there's those who are dead and those who are about to die and if we're gonna die let's don't die here let's go up there and so with incredible courage come on my god world where's your courage with incredible fearlessness they bounded out from that little hiding place they threw their hand grenades over the top and when the bombs went off they ran over the hill and they stopped the killing many of them did perish as you might imagine in that attempt, I can't remember. You can read the book. It's by McManus. I know there were 22 of them, and I think there were like seven that ended up killing the 11 machine gunners at the top. But I want us to realize something. There is a battle raging in the spirit world. Everything you see in the natural is just a reflection of what's actually happening in the spirit. There is a war for the soul of our country and our world. This is not just an American political phenomenon. This is not just something that's happening in our community, in our state, in our country. This is a worldwide assault. The enemy is trying to consume our world with darkness and he's trying to crush any might or strength within it. He wants to stop the one thing that can stop him. The one thing that has stopped him before and can stop him again is when the people of God will rise up and realize who they are and what they're capable of. <laughs> Hallelujah. This great country that we live in was built on Christian values and the kingdom of God. It pushed back the darkness once and it can push back the darkness again, but we're gonna have to wake up the mighty men. I wish I could stand in every pulpit across this country and say, wake up the mighty men. Some of you got a call of God on your life. You've heard people say it. Your mama said it to you. Your pastor, your people. My God, there's a call of God on your life. I came here this morning to tell you. He shot Tiana by her side. It's time to wake up. It's no time to sleep. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. It's time for you to open up your eyes. It's time for you to get up off your bed of slumber and sleep. There is a lot of people in this world who are called of God. But what makes the difference is the ones who say yes. Who believe God is able to do what he said he would do. And I came here this morning to wake somebody up and call you to say yes. Hallelujah. What makes you mighty is when you say yes to God and you say no to the devil. When you wake up and you look at your family and you look at your school and you look at your community and you say not in my town, not in my school, not in my house. God is with us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, you young people. You're our future. You're the future of not only our church. You're the future of our world. You're the future of our freedom. We've got to raise up an army of young people who are armored. Hallelujah. From head to toe with the armor of God, with the shield of faith in one hand and the sword of the spirit in another who know how to stand against the wickedness of the enemy. He got on my side. Hallelujah. We got to teach our children how to stand. And how do we teach them how to stand? We stand. The Bible doesn't say cry and whine against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. The Bible says having done all. You know what that says to me? Never run. Never give up. Never stop. You got to have some things in you. There's so many people that there is no hill that they won't die on. There's a lot of hills I'll die on. Let me tell you something. It's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up, the mighty men. I want to tell you something, young person. Mighty men were not always mighty. Mighty men were not born. Mighty men are formed. Let me tell you something. In our world, there's people that live all kind of lifestyles, and they'll tell you as an excuse, I was born this way. Let me tell you what I'll say to that. We're all born in sin and shaping in iniquity. That's just part of the human condition. Every one of us has a propensity to be selfish and to give our world and our society up just to please our flesh for a moment. Every one of us has the, 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 the capacity to throw everything to the wind because we want to feel good for a moment, but that is not mighty. Let me tell you something. Greatness is never in the genes. It is always formed. It is a decision that you make at some point in your life to say yes to God. When God is calling you, he always calls you to do something bigger and greater than you're capable of. He always calls you to a place that you could never attain. It always seems impossible when God speaks. God is never going to ask you to do something you can do yourself. But what makes you mighty is when you say, God, if you will call me and you've said I can do it, I believe that you're going to be with me and that you will do exceedingly above everything I can ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. Gideon, he was hiding behind the wine presses. He was afraid. He was defeated. And the angel said, come on, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon's like, whoa, I don't know who you're talking to. And there's some of you sitting in here tonight and you're saying, I don't know who you're talking to. I'm talking to you. The angel said, I'm talking to you, Gideon. And Gideon said, not me. Oh, we're defeated. My people are defeated. We're, de we're oppressed. Everything we've tried has failed. And I'm hiding. I'm not mighty. I'm weak. And the angel said something so powerful to Gideon. If you get it, he said, go in this thy might. What does that mean, Gideon? It means take all of the oppression all of the pain, all of the loss, all of the abuse, and convert it into fuel. Turn it into fire. You need to defeat the devil that is keeping you down. You need to destroy the addiction through the power of God. You need to put all of those things under your feet, and you need to turn them into gasoline. You need to light a fire under your spirit and wake up and become mighty for God. Let me tell you something. The only thing standing between the darkness and our world is mighty men and women. And God sent me to house of prayer this morning to say, wake up. 
up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Some of you need to decide to stop being pushed around by the enemy. Some of you need to get out of the fetal position and realize that God is with me. And if God is with us, who can be against us? Oh yeah, time's up. <laughs> My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Mighty men begin with a decision. Let me say something. There's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. What do I got to do to accomplish the will of God? You got to make up your mind. My God, it seems so simple, but it is so powerful. There's got to be something rise up in you. There's got to be some grit in your teeth. There's got to be something that says, I can do what God has called me to do, and I will do it. And if I don't do it, people will never make it because I won't. Mark 3, verse 27. I'm almost done. It says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Listen to me, Dad. The devil has one objective. And that is your family. But there's one thing standing between you, him, and your family. And that is the strong man. And the only way he's going to get his claws into your children is if he can bind the strong man. And then he can step past you. He can step through their phones. He can step through their friends. He can step through the wickedness of their school. He can step through every avenue that he has. And he can get his wicked claws on your children. But first, he has to bind you and shut your mouth. And condemn your spirit. And make you weak. First. But God sent me to house of prayer this morning to say this. Wake up, mighty man. There's three things I want to leave with you today. Number one, you need to come to this altar this morning and repent. Some of you have ran from the voice of God in your life. Simply because you want to live in sin. And you know that God is calling you up higher. You need to repent this morning with no reservations. I say this all the time. Reservations stop transformations. Reservations stop transformations. God, I will do it. I want to do it. But God, I want this girl. I want to have her with me. I want this drinking. I want to keep doing. Come on. You got to give God. You got to make up your mind that I'm going to follow you, Jesus. And you're going to give me what I need. You need to repent this morning. Number one. You need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This world needs you, young person. We can't afford to lose you. We cannot afford for you to get lost in this mess. We got to raise you up and make you mighty. Number two, it's time to speak up. Jesus said, if you won't confess me before men, I will not confess you before my Father which is in heaven. We think that means somebody coming up to the front of the church and saying a sinner's prayer. But in reality, in that scripture right there, it was a capital offense to confess Jesus. You know why they cut Paul's head off? Because he preached Jesus. You know why they hung Peter from a cross upside down? Because he preached Jesus. You know why they drug Luke to death behind a cart? Because he preached Jesus. Do you know why all the disciples except one were martyrs? Because they preached Jesus. Do you know why they boiled John in oil and, and banished him to the Isle of Patmos? Because he preached Jesus. Jesus said, if you won't confess me, 
I won't confess you. We got to understand what he meant in that scripture. He said, the next thing he said is he that loveth his life shall lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake shall save it. And we live in a place where it's legal to confess Jesus, where it's okay to confess Jesus, where nobody can stop us. And we're worried about somebody's feelings, but somebody's got to wake up and speak to that girl sitting beside you at work and say, hey man, you don't have to live like this anymore. My God is able to deliver you. He can save your marriage and your family. We got to wake up and we got to speak up. Mighty men speak the truth in love, but they speak the truth. It's time to get some Holy Ghost boldness and get out of our comfort zone and begin to speak Jesus. I love that song. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. And number three, finally, in closing, my phone is fighting me again. Here we go. You need to believe. You need to repent. You need to speak. And finally, you need to believe that if I seek his kingdom first, all these things will be added unto me. You need to believe that. How am I going to believe it? The devil keeps telling me that if I give in to my calling, I'm going to have to give up everything. Here's how you believe it. Follow the science. Go and find people who have given their lives to God with abandonment. And see how their life is. See if they're not blessed. See if they're not happy. See if they're not powerful. See if they don't live for God with passion. There's some people that walk around dead. They're like zombies because there's no passion. There's no fire. They're slaves. I want to live a life with purpose. I want to live with passion. I'm not going to die down here and drown like a rat in the ocean of sin. I'm going to die up there. I don't know about you, but I believe that if I seek God's kingdom first, he will give me everything I need. He will give me a life full of joy. He will give me the right person to spend it with. He will save my kids. I don't care what happens. I know that he made me a promise. He said, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they may, they will not depart from it. I believe those things. I'm asking you to repent this morning. I'm asking you to hear the voice of God again break through all the noise and call you one more time and say man of God woman of God wake up and say yes to me and say no to the devil and to all his slavery in your life I'm asking you to go out from this place this week and speak the name of Jesus and I'm asking you to believe that if God is for me stand with me who who can be against me wake up mighty man these altars are open this morning I want to wake somebody up today in the name of Jesus God speak to your people this morning wake up the mighty man this morning help us to come out of bondage today the strong man he's he's got he's trying to stop us God he's trying to bind us God he wants to get a hold of our families he wants to destroy our town he wants to destroy our country and our world and he's trying to bind me but I will not be bound I will rise up and be mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds thank you guys for joining us today We hope that the message really blessed your heart. And if you need any prayer or any information about the church, you can message us and we really hope to see you guys soon.